Hey guys, so rivers that run through territories of two or even three countries are cause for debate and dispute among neighbors. Now, in the modern world, when the lack of fresh water becomes more severe, many countries are ready to spend massive sums to keep some of that valuable water in their territory that is brought by rivers from a neighboring country. All this to say that people have been building buildings since ancient times just designed to stop the flow of water for use in agriculture. However, dams that were built before are much, much smaller than modern ones today. And today's constructions are just true marvels of engineering, thought, and technique, including large cement walls with floodgates and gates built across rivers. Additionally, the taller the dam, the larger its reserve power. So, the construction of a dam in riverheads can create a series of positive effects for the country the dam is in, and negative ones for the neighbors downstream. Dams and water storage structures are a legal way to solve problems with water reserves, but unfortunately, they can lead to conflicts with the neighbors. So, Turkey set itself a goal to build a new power station in a hydroelectric dam, producing up to 3,800 gigawatt hours by 2023 for the 100-year anniversary of the Turkish Republic. Pretty cool birthday present. The Elisu Dam will be one of the largest in Turkey, and water from it will be used to irrigate agricultural lands. The massive Elisu Dam's construction has been ongoing since 2006 in Turkey and has already become contentious for Middle Eastern countries. The dam will cover the Tigris River in its upper flow 40 miles from the border with Iraq, Turkey's southern neighbor. And as you can guess, Baghdad is not very happy with Turkey's new hydroelectric success and is counting the losses and terror that await the country in the near future. Iraq, a country in semi-desert and desert climates, sees the Tigris and Euphrates as a stable source of fresh water, which the country needs to exist. So the source and upper flow of the Tigris are in Turkish territory. Here in the eastern Taurus Mountains, there's a lake called Hazar. It begins at the Middle East Great River, which has provided many civilizations in this semi-desert region with water for thousands of years. Now, the length of the Turkish and border parts of the river is about 283 miles, while the remaining 880 miles are in Iraq. Because of the rapidly growing populations and growing demand for electricity, Iraq and Turkey decided to undertake a massive reroute of the river by building dams and water reservoirs. Now, additionally, Turkey is in a better geostrategic position and has the ability to throw its weight around in regard to the river head. Currently, Turkey already has two dams with active hydroelectric power stations and is building several more, including the Ilisu Dam. Now, the idea of building the Elisu Dam came back about uh, in the 1950s. A more specific plan was made in the 1980s, and construction finally began in 2006. And it's had a few uh, setbacks due to a lack of financing. So Turkey from the beginning counted on foreign investors, but in 2006, due to protests from ecologists, only the British government refused to participate in the construction costing Turkey $236 million. Now, in 2009, other European investors also left the project. The construction resumed after Turkish banks got involved. They gave the government a loan for hundreds of millions of dollars, and the total expenses for the Elisu Dam were 1.5 billion euros. So the dam has a rock fill construction reinforced by a reinforced concrete face. The dam is 443 feet tall and over 6,000 feet long. The power station has six 200 megawatt turbines. Now, it's not hard to calculate that the total power of the Lisu Dam is 1,200 megawatts, much more than the other two dams built in Turkey on the Tigris. However, this dam is causing some concern not only in the Iraqi government, but also among historians, ecologists, and many public figures both in Turkey and abroad. After the dam is built, there will be a massive reservoir over 121 square miles. 
Now, despite the southeast of the country being considered one of the lowest populated zones, there are about 200 settlements in the flood zone, including one of the planet's oldest cities, Hasankiev. The history of Hasankiev is more than just one millennium. The first large settlement appeared here in the times of ancient Romans, who built the Kiev fort on the Tigris. The city transferred hands to various governments many times and was built and rebuilt until it became part of the Ottoman Empire in the 16th century. Now, powerful earthquakes have shaken Hassan Kiev throughout its history, destroying much of the city's ancient buildings, but there was still something to see. There are hundreds of medieval and ancient buildings, but the government could save only eight of them, which is what bothers the public most of all. The list of saved structures includes the 15th century mausoleum of Zainal Bey and the baths and minaret of the Suleiman Khan Mosque. We should give praise to the Turkish specialists that were able to undertake this complex technological operation of moving entire architectural objects without having to take them apart. Now, the 12,000-year history of the southeastern Turkey area is being flooded along with a city of sunken archaeological monuments made up of 4,000 caves and the nearby villages. 760 typical homes, a large mosque, a school, a mall, and a museum have already been built on the opposite bank of the river in the new Hassan Kayef. Ahmed Akdeniz was originally against the government's plans, but then he changed his mind. He says the government bought his home and shop at a good price. He bought a spacious home in new Hassan Kayef with that money. Almost 80,000 people had to leave their homes. So the water gathering began in late July 2019 and will last for several years. This was after several steps of difficult negotiations between Turkey and Iraq, who suggested a gradual fill to make sure the Tigris didn't stop flowing. Nevertheless, Iraq specialists detected the decreased river flow after Turkey started filling the reservoir. Instead of the expected 25,000 foot cubed a second, the flow had decreased to 14,000 foot cubed a second. The water levels in the Tigris in northern Iraq noticeably decreased, and the riverbed was visible in several places, which had never happened before. In April 2020, the dam had gathered 268 billion cubic feet of water, and the water in the reservoir stretched to 1,680 feet above sea level. Now, if you look at a map of Iraq, then it seems the Tigris and Euphrates with many tributaries, irrigation canals, and reservoirs make fertile land in the desert. But that bountiful land is very fluid. Iraq is becoming a prison to its geographical location when the head of its two great rivers and almost all of its large tributaries are located in neighboring countries. So besides the lack of water, the lack of rainfall, and the soil depletion, almost ceased the growth of rice, corn, sesame, sunflower, and cotton seeds, and the reduction of the total area of wheat and barley doubled during the 2018-19 season. It's paradoxical, but the real rulers of Iraq's freshwater riches are Turkey, Syria, and Iran. These countries require more fresh water every year, and they are completely, legally, keeping it. Syria also directly suffered from Turkish dam-building projects, that limited the flow of water to Syria by 40% since the Elisu Dam is just part of the ambitious government project called Southeastern Anatolia that began over 30 years ago. It destabilized the relationship between the countries, even then. Now, when Turkey started building this project, it led to the Turkish-Syrian and Turkish-Iraqi tension. Back in 1990, Turkey needed to get its army ready because it started filling a large dam's water reservoir and added Turk. Iraq threatened to bomb the dam because Turkish action led to a temporary decrease in water to Iraq and Syria by 75%. Turkey responded by threatening to block the water to its neighbors. Further confrontations didn't happen, so the Turks could calmly continue their project. Now, the fact that there are more and more dams at the heads of both rivers is only increasing the tension with other countries. Now, it's hard to say what will happen next, but we hope that the country's governments will have enough support and they can solve this conflict diplomatically. Well, that's all for today. Leave us a like and a comment. Tell me what you learned in this video, and we'll see you again next time.